Right, welcome back to another outlying fell walk. It's just a little one today. Um, four fells today. I'll see how I feel after that. I might do a, one or two more, but no, I've set off pretty late this morning. Just gone one o'clock. But we're in South Cumbria again on Corny Fell Road. And bloody hell, we're high up already. Enough parking there for about eight cars. You uh, have came down via the 591 today because there is another alternate route where you can go around by Sellafield. But um, there is a bridge down along this road at the moment, so and apparently it's not going to be back up for at least another 18 months. Um, but anyway, here we are. The four fells we're doing today are Book Barrow, Kinmont Book Barrow, Burnmore, and Whith Fell. Um, yeah, just the four, and it looks like a nice little ramble up. I think there's a couple of them just over there. I'm assuming that's going to be Book Barrow and Kinmont. So I, 70 odd mile drive. It's lucky I enjoy that drive through Hambleside, Coniston, round to here, but yeah. This is uh, the furthest away but one walk I'll be doing on uh, these outlying fell rounds. The furthest away I think is shrouded in thick clag over there, Black Coombe. But uh, I do think I might leave that till the end because a decent sized hill Bye. look at these views here all the way down to the sand dunes that's how close we are to the coastal areas well, I... there is a bigger version of this walk that you can do to incorporate the fells around dev oak water as well but uh, I'm just using this as a day to chill enjoy pleasant conditions as opposed to last Saturday where <laughs> got badly sunburned <laughs> but I uh, turned into a nice tan almost really sadly my back of my necks fell off but uh, uh, it's been a rough week but we're 100% recovered now and ready for more sunburn if there was sun but uh, perfect conditions can't complain against this uh, oh i've enjoyed that drive along that road corny fell road it's worth it just for the drive so far up we must be starting 150 to 200 meters up at that point right so we're nearly on the horizon just below buck barrow look at this clag coming directly for me that is the sort of look I get at the moment. Absolutely brutal. I don't know, it might just be a passing mist. Black Coombe's coming out again now. But bloody hell. The last five days I've been working and there have been some of the five most glorious days. I don't think there's been a wisp of cloud on any fell. So we've just walked up from the car park up into this call here and I believe this one is Book Barrow but first I'm actually going to go over here to Kinmont Book Barrow just a short distance and I'll come back over here and climb up that big rock there and I think we go in this direction somewhere to Burnmoor and I believe Whitfell is in the distance over there so yeah it's a very short walk but uh, spectacular views especially that way I love seeing down onto the coast but that residue clags coming in now but just over here to Kinmont Book Barrow there's wild towns here oh wow walls didn't expect that oh dear oh well yep there's a gap in the wall just over there so yeah I'm gonna head out and back for that one and then come back for Book Barrow itself. The hedge over this wall here, conveniently demolished. Oh, so 
see what I like about these walks. I mean, there are paths somewhere, but uh, you can just almost walk anywhere you want. So it's, uh, if you make a mistake, it's easily rectified. So, yeah. you know, if you can see the hills, they're quite tough in Clag, I suppose. Luckily, it's still keeping away. But I just up here to the first one of the day, Kinmon Book Barrow. Wayne Rice of the day, Kinmont Book Barrow, 500 and summit meters. Didn't know how many, but oh, aye, that was easy. And here it is. <laughs> Would you Adam and Eve it? Clag. <sighs> Look at that over there. Now it's hard to identify these fells <laughs> from this angle because I've not seen them. I'm assuming the one's going to be the old man of Coniston but clear that's 800 plus meters look down here at 500 god sake that must be so unlucky oh well anyway I've got a liter of tea with me so I'm gonna divide that by the four hills which is 250 milliliters per hill today that's easy tea maths for you I think the longer I wait the more chance this has to clear off the second one of the day is going to be uh, Book Barrow and then Burn Moors up, up here and then Whitfell just in the distance there. Please clear up, come on. What have I done to deserve that? Well, I've angled the camera to the best view at the moment. You can see the course at least. But... Cheers anyway. Oh yeah. Right, so we're just leaving Kinmont Book Barrow and heading over to Book Barrow. Uh, aye, that clag's getting dangerously towards Whitfell. And if it clags that one in, I'll be really unhappy. I might even smash my camera. But we can only pray. Anyway, hi. This is Little Alfell. Can't see anybody out today. Oh, any of these paths, but uh, nice little ramble nonetheless. A bit of solitude. It's what we like sometimes. Now, the two potential summits here. I can see a large cairn on the end of this uh, crag here so I'm going to go over to that but that's definitely the high point up there so we'll, we'll get both just to be sure but uh, I can't see a cairn up there from this vantage point burn moves coming out of the clag a little bit now cool it's a rolling fell and yeah, whip fell does look impressive See, I thought these fells were around 300 meters, but no, they're not apparently around four or five hundred. So, uh, it just shows you how high we've started because there wasn't much climbing to get up here. And here we are, that little cairn I saw from all the way over there on Kinmont Book Barrow. Well, that's definitely higher over there, so I don't know what this is signifying. Perhaps it's the Wainwright Summit, there's two cairns in fact, one on top of these rocks, but we'll go to them, just to be sure, oh, oh. oh. yeah, yep, yeah. oh well, aye, uh, that's just a wall, the summit can't be the wall, so it must be that over there. Right now, just on the final approach to Book Barrow, just have to navigate these rocks. The paths kind of disappeared here, but looks like there's several ways you could get up. I'm just taking the most gradual route. 
hopefully it'll snake around to the back here very cool i love when you come to a horizon and a view opens up it's quite spectacular but i don't see any obvious line up here so let's just keep going Ooh. oh bloody hell be careful these rocks some of them are not fixed i can't imagine it's walked too many times these fells so i can't imagine many have been displaced over the years but i just have one last pull up here we'll touch it boom well this looks the more impressive outcrop let's just go up here and take off the second fell of the day book barrow oh look the views are coming back cheers wow what a summit I like it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is about the same height as that one over there now with the cairn on. Looking back to Kinmont, just over yonder there. Aye, right, impressive. A lot of rocks in such an area filled with uh, lovish green hills. Wonder how that happens. Anyway, just have a quick cup of here. We'll tackle path directly up Burnmoor. Pleasant, very pleasant. Go. Uh, the clag's still hugging Black Coombe over there, 600 meters, but largely dissipated here, so that's good news. Let me show you Black Coombe. So yeah, as long as it stays there on top of that hill, it's not going to bother me. Aye, pleasant. But anyway, yeah, just going to finish my brew here. Keep cracking on over there. Right, so yeah, we're just down from uh, Buck Barrow there, and I've discovered there is an easier way up if you don't want to navigate all those rocks on the south face of it if you come further around here it is kind of just grass all the way up to the summit there so yeah probably the safer route if you tackle it via the the north side but anyway i'm just uh, trying to find the path over to burn more i can see it etched into the hillside there and i keep repeating myself but that's a good thing it doesn't really you don't really need a path i can just make a beeline for that over there no weed whacking or cut knees today from dead grass. It's all nice and short. Just a nice gradual ascent up onto burn more next. And then we're looking where we are here, northeastwards towards the Lake District. Seeing them for the first time from this angle. Great. I can barely even name them from here yeah it's tough but anyway we're not focused on them just now we're focused on learning new outliers i think i've learned at least nine or ten more today looking around here and i'll point a few of them out once we get up on top of whitfell So that's what I thought was the summit. It's indicated, but looks like there's a slightly higher one over here. So yeah, we've just came from across this mule land here. What I'm gonna do, nip over there to bag that cairn and then we'll be retracing our steps all the way over here to Whitfell. Right, here we are on the summit of Burnmore. We've got the more impressive cairn, but looking back now, I think we were actually on it. So that's a, a lesson in frivolity, I think. But anyway, yeah, worth it to come over here just for the viewpoint, really. All this uh, flat land is a very impressive bridge there across um, 
the sand dunes there. Never seen that before. We must be looking down onto Millam somewhere. Can't quite see it. Beautiful. Wow. Anyway, I'm just gonna have two minutes here. And then I'm gonna head back the way we came to the point that now looks higher. Ah, when will I learn? You've got to remember, sometimes the Wainwright isn't the highest point of the fell, it's uh, the viewpoint or the, the certain section, but it doesn't bother me. If I get to the highest point, I'm happy with that, to be fair. But uh, lovely viewpoint, that's definitely the best viewpoint on Burnmore. But anyway, let's head back to this cairn now here. Ah. Right, so we're back to the starting point on the actual route now, heading off this way to Witch Fell. So this must be Burnmore. You can see over there, you can, I don't think just about make out the cairn over there. It does look higher from this point, but when you get there, it no longer is. So that's why I make these videos. I'll make the mistakes so you don't have to. Yeah, I don't think you need to bother going over there. All it is a a nice viewpoint but very little in the way of path but uh easy enough to walk through but anyway i'm gonna have a quick cup of here now because i've exhausted myself with that out and back aye tell you what it's a good job i'm not collecting rocks off these outlying fells because some of the summits didn't even have any <laughs> they're that barren Plenty out of there though, but uh, there's any loose ones here on on burn more, so I'd have to be carting a 10 kilo rock down the hill with us if I wanted to collect them. But anyway, yeah, just a short walk over to Whitfell now, and uh, we'll have a look down from there. Hopefully, see the next route or one of the next routes that we're going to do. There's a, I was going to do this as a sort of 11 fell walk around, but I just didn't fancy it today. And I, I do need to break them up a little bit just to enjoy them once they're done like i say they are done and uh i felt a little bit lost after finishing the actual lane right so i don't want to rush through these too quickly i'm loving that view down onto the old bay there if you can see it is it Markham bay i'm not sure i always see Markham bay but uh, this is as close as i've been to it since probably the late 90s when we used to go to cartmel races with the family for a weekend Good fun, felt like a long way away from North Cumbria back then, but oh, it's just a quick hour and a half drive these days. I do like the drive anyway, down that 591, it's beautiful. I just, I'd go to Ambleside on my days off, just so just drive all the way there, have a have some teas and drive back, because it's just, you can barely take your eyes off the road, it's enjoyable. Anyway, finished my brew here, we cracking on to the final end of the day, which fell. I actually seen this walk on YouTube the other day from a new channel, Capturing Lakeland, um, run by Paul. I think they're a bit of a spin-off from the old fat boys on tour days who haven't put a video out in ages and uh, it's a shame. I'd love to see his back out. But anyway, yeah, big shout out to Paul, Mary and Derek. They even stole my hiking buddy, Mr. Dave Glenn Hewitt. So that's why I'm out doing these ones today because he did that with this route with them. But anyway, yeah, if you uh, want to go out on a, on a ramble sometime and we'll pick up some outline fells that neither of us have done, I'll be more than happy to do that. I will say, though, that uh, when we were hiking in Coniston last week, I was going on about Paul's eyebrows. They're some of the best in the business. And Dave chipped in with the comment, he looks like Captain Scarlet. So, yeah, that's a compliment. We all want to look like Captain Scarlet. But anyway, yeah, it'd be lovely to meet you all. Right, so here we are on the summit of the fourth and final outlying Wainwright of the day of Witch Fell. We'll take it, thank you very much. Oh, wow. 
It's opened up quite nicely. You can see a big bunch of the other ones that we need to do in this area. I think the Stainton Pike just over there. And we've got, uh, I believe behind it somewhere is the Knot. And we've got Yord Castle over here. Uh, ah, beautiful. Well, I'm not going to do them today. They're for a, another round starting from Devoke Water, which I can't quite see here. I think it's on the next horizon there. But I, I'm just going to sit here and chill for 10, 20 minutes. Have a snack and uh, we're going to be heading back. But hi, what a summit. To Lakeland. Good. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent. Oh my god. It's so tempting just to nip over there and pick them up, but I haven't prepared myself for a walk of that length today, even though it doesn't look too far. But yeah, it just makes for another day in this area. Like I say, um named a few of the ones in that group there. Then you go down to Devoke Water and there's two or three behind on the north side of Devoke Water before I believe this is Hesk Fell over here. A uh, little green lumpy mound there. And there's one more in this area, the Pike, which is just down there. So I think the full round is about 13, 14 mile. I just didn't have that in me today, especially after the last yomp that we did in South Coniston. But I, uh, wow. The lighting's beautiful as well. It's not too clear. There is clag above, but it's just keeping it all in focus. And hey, I'm just gonna have a, have a sit down and uh, be a nice spot to camp this actually. Oh, a few little tans down there for a swim and all. Looks quite deep. But anyway, cheers. Like I say, to Lakeland, to Wainwright. Well, that's looking back from Whence we came, the old book barrows over there. But the views of this side. I do like a coastal view, but I prefer the view of mountains more. Look at this massive over here. Old Coniston Fells. A few more outlying fells south down here. Nothing looks a little nothing looks as high as this one here really, so a lot of small ones. Except this ridge which runs all the way from I think Walna Scar right down the centre there. There's two or three on on that which look quite uh, quite tasty. I just want to give a shout out to another channel. Uh, he came with us on the, or they came with us on the Binzi Wild Camp. That's uh, Walking Wild Camp in UK. Mr. Mossman Outdoors and his partner, not lovers, Mr. DA Outdoors, uh, Dave Allen. They've just completed the Cumbrian Way last week from uh, Ulverston all the way down there to Carlisle. That's a long way. I can barely even see uh, Central Fells from here. But aye, that's some achievement. Absolutely fantastic, lads. Hope to get on a few uh, trail walks myself at some point in the future, but I'm just gaining experience. I like bagging these outliers, so that'll be me for the time being, I think. Tell you what, there's been absolutely nobody here. Not even on the other fells I can see in the distance. Let's see, it's Monday afternoon now. The roads are quiet. Perfect time to come. Although what I will say is, if you're coming on a weekend, you need to get to that car park very early. You wouldn't be able to come the time I've come today because, like I say, seven, eight cars can go in there. Now you may be tempted to park along the actual road and it looks like in some areas that is possible however there are ditches on the side of the road so if you're not careful you're going to ditch your car and it's going to be stuck there until a tractor comes up and pulls you out so just be careful um, about the parking for this one so like I say it's a good car park and it's free um, but I reckon you've got to get here pretty early especially on a weekend you never know it might still be quiet on a weekend because like I say they're not some of the most glamorous fells but yeah, I think still plenty of people will want to do them. So, uh, just my advice. This is quite nice. Got 
wit engraved in. On the back we've got some fond memory. That's all that remains of somebody's uh, life. A rock on an outline fell. And where my rock will be laid to rest. It's been half an hour up here, probably the most I've spent on any summit. So that tells you something about uh, how stunning it is up here. But anyway, look at those northern fells now. The grim mists approaching. Clouds are forming over there. And I guess we're soon going to be all engulfed. So the next few days, I don't think are going to be that pleasant. But anyway, goodbye Whitfell. I'll see you again one day. So yeah, we can see pretty much the entire route that we did today. So Kinmont Book Barrow is in the distance there. Then we moved over to Book Barrow before traversing the moor up to Burn Moor and then from Burn Moor up here to Witchfell. Right, so we're just down Witchfell now and thankfully we don't have to go back above Burn Moor. There is a path that skirts around one of the contours there to skip it out which is nice and I yeah just two and a half hours to this point probably a, an hour back from here if that so yeah a very amble pleasant walk anybody can do this one you can't hurt yourself very little in terms of rock apart from top of book barrel there but I uh, beautiful makes a change from last week when severe sunburn in Coniston incidentally I'm trying to lose weight as we all are and I do feel like I'm getting a little bit fitter but I think I weigh myself quite constantly and I think I was 14 stone 10 the Friday before the Coniston walk I weighed myself when I got back home after the walk I was 14 stone 3 or 4 <laughs> so that's how much liquid I lost doing that walk on a hot day so it does have its benefits but I'd rather not get sunburned uh. but anyway long may it reduce and we get a bit fitter we can do longer miles right that's us at the top of the pass just in between the two book barrows and i thought i'd better wrap up the adventure from here uh, i don't think this route's got a name so i'm going to call it the corny fells with reference to the road that you've got to drive up to get here. But anyway, four outlying fells today. We started on Kinmont Book Barrow, Book Barrow just here, Burn Moor in the distance, and Whitfell just round the corner there. Four for the day, and just over three hours, I think. So very amble, very pleasant. So I just want to say thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you back out on the fells very, very soon. Peace.